Selamat sejahtera. Peace be upon you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Asia Water 2020 Non-Revenue Water Challenges Virtual Conference. I'm Prabina and I'm your MC for today. Before we start the webinar today, there are a few rules that we have to adhere. All microphone and video of attendees have been muted. If you have any question, please wait for the Q&A session or do list them down at the Q&A box. If there's any internet disruption, during the session, kindly be patient and try to sign in again. Without further ado, let's welcome our moderator, Dr. I.R. Haji Muhammad Asari Daud, Deputy President, Malaysian Water Association, MWA. Dr. Asari, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope uh, you can listen me well. Uh, you can hear me well. Uh, very good morning. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this session of uh, uh, Asia Water to discuss on non-revenue water challenges. And uh, we are fortunate today to have three experienced speakers, uh, local and also overseas, who has vast experience in uh, non-revenue water uh, projects and also management and uh, we are having uh, Mr. Sobri from Span, uh, Mr. Hyrule from Renhill and last but not the least Mr. Lim Min from the Cambodian Water Supply Association. So we have a variety of speakers to speak on uh, several topics. And the first speaker for this morning session will be I.R. Mohammad Sobri Zakaria. I.R. Mohammad Sobri Zakaria is currently the Executive Director of the Water and Sewerage Regulatory Department of the National Water Services Commission, or in short, SPAN. So I.R. Sobri is uh, uh, holds a degree in civil engineering from University of Technology Malaysia. He graduated in 1991 and then joined Perbadanan uh, Pinang. And uh, he was there for about 15 years. And during his tenure at PBA, he was involved in uh, NRW management besides production. In 2008, uh, I Sobri. Uh, joined SPAN and he was later promoted to the current position as executive director of the Water and Sewerage Regulatory Department of uh, SPAN. So uh, I hope uh, we will be uh, sharing with him a uh, very interesting discussion on non revenue water uh, prospects in Malaysia. I think he'll be touching about major uh, policies and also major strategies towards uh, improving non-revenue water in Malaysia. I think our Sobri is ready for his presentation. I uh, hope uh, I can pass the floor to him now uh, for him to make his presentation. Can our Sobri uh, take the floor please? Uh, sorry. Yeah, thank you. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. I can hear you. Shall yeah. we start? Eh? <coughs> okay. Uh, Assalamualaikum and uh, good morning to all. Uh, this year we meet again in Asia Water Conference, but in a different platform, uh, virtual platform, due to pandemic COVID nineteen. Uh, my name is Muhammad Sobri Zakaria. Thank you for the Mr. Chairman uh, Haji Asari in, uh, for introducing uh, myself. I am an executive director of water and sewerage regulatory at SPAN. Uh, is it okay? Uh, 
I would like to thank uh, the Asian worker uh, for inviting uh, SPAN to participate in this event. Uh, today, I will be sharing with you uh, a topic on the performance-based grant for non-revenue water. It is uh, an incentive uh, from the government to the water operators to achieve their NRW target in the form of a grant. My presentation will cover the following topics. Uh, first is about, I touched a bit about uh, a little background on the NRW program under uh, 11 Malaysia plan. Uh, next, uh, selection of the NRW program approach. Uh, the criteria used by the government to select who in which approach. Thirdly, I will be focusing on NRW program and the uh, approach two. I will, I will elaborate later. Uh, Espan was uh, appointed as to implement this program. Uh, and then uh, I will touch about NRW work scope covered under approach two. Uh, I will share also uh, uh, the trending uh, of NRW from 2008 until 2019. And then I will uh, touch also about the approach to outcome. What happened on the first and second year of the implementation? Uh, next, the common factors for target to achieve, the effect of uh, COVID-19 to NRW, and the approach to way forward and the uh, 12 nation plan and lastly i will touch about some suggestion for improvement okay uh, a bit uh, a little bit background on the uh, pro, uh the under Malaysian plan. I mean, the program started way back in uh, 2016 when the cabinet agreed with the ministry proposal, uh, last time called a KETA on the NLB program for the RM uh, for the 11 Malaysian plan. So they agreed with the national NLW reduction program which consists of two approaches. Uh, so we have uh, approach one and approach two. Approach one was designed to help uh, to the operator that less performed state in the NRW program. And the uh, basis uh, for this approach is to develop a basic NRW facility and tackle low hanging fruit scope. Uh, it involves work scope of uh, SIV meter, as thermometer, GIS system, and repair or rehabilitated the water tanks or reservoir and so on. Uh, it is a one of grant. And then the government also had approved uh, an allocation about uh, Ringgit Malaysia 535 million for this program, which involves six states. The criteria set for this approach is uh, at the NRW level at the at that time, I mean uh, in 2017, when the program started, was about 40% and above. So this approach uh, will be implemented by our uh, division of water supply and the ministry. And then for approach two which is under SPAN, is an incentive approach, a performance-based uh, performance based grant uh, whereby the government will reimburse 50% uh, or 70%, it depends on the performance of the operator's expenditure in the program uh, of NRW, if the target uh, were met. So uh, in this approach too, for the operator, 
which the NW level is under 40%. There are seven states uh, involved. And the allocation for this approach is about 1.4 billion. Next. Uh, what is uh, NRB program approach to? Uh, it is a performance-based incentive whereby the government will reimburse 50% or 75%, depending on the achievement of the water operators of annual expenditure for the NRB program. It is to encourage the operators continuously and increase the effort in reducing NRW. This is the first program that uh, ministry program using this approach. So during the uh, planning for uh, 11 nature plan, uh, the ministry wants to try a different approach uh, in implementing of uh, NRW program. Normally the program is project based using a government loan, but after reviewing the performance of the previous approach, it seems that the NRW level is not uh, reducing much. Coming from uh, that angle, so a new method is uh, introduced under 11 nation plan. So uh, NRW program approach two incentive is being introduced and implemented uh, for the, uh, this time to help the operators. Next, uh, for the methodology for approach to reimbursement, as I mentioned earlier that uh, the government will reimburse the operator's expenditure in the NRB program by 50 or 75%. It means that operator needs to come uh, with the money themselves upfront to fund for the program. If they achieve the target, they will get the reimbursement and if they don't achieve, they don't, they, 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 no reimbursement will be given if they don't achieve uh, the target uh, that we already agreed that. So the 50% reimbursement will be given if the target is achieved. Meanwhile, another 75%, I mean, uh, another uh, incentive is 75% is given when the operator achievement is double from the target. Uh, as an example, if the NRW level in 2018 is 25% and the target for 2019 is 24%, which is 1% reduction. So by end of 2019, if the achievement is 24%, that means 50% will be reimbursed uh, to the water operator. Let's say if they achieve 23 percent in the end of 2019 which is a two percent reduction so the operator is eligible for 75 percent reimbursement because they double the effort to achieve uh, from the original target one percent to two percent uh, uh, reduction in nrw and of course this achievement will be verified by us we will do a 100% checking for the operators, uh, which they report that they achieved the target uh, for the NRB reduction. Next. Okay, uh, any expenditure under NRW scope of works, uh, some sort of like pipe replacement, uh, EMC, active leakage control, meter replacement, uh, establishment of uh, DMA or DMZ, pressure management, uh, telemetry system or IoT system, GIS, all is considered under approach two. Uh, the ministry also approved uh, this uh, additional scope uh, apart from the above that I mentioned. So related to the NRW uh, specific operators, such as setting up uh, common centers, uh, billing analysis and etc. So at the beginning uh, of the program, uh, at the beginning of the program, water operators involved had present their planning to span, including what program they will do 
uh, in terms of cost and also an RW target. Next. In terms of uh, NRW performance, uh, the table is showing the NRW achievement for the past 11 years. We can see at the national level of NRW, it is still the same level in 2008 as uh, at now, Q2 2020. It's about 36.9%. Uh, we have stuck at 35 or 36%. So what went wrong is a million dollar question. So uh, for the information of the audience, the NRW target is 30% set uh, under uh, the ministry under sustainability journey uh, 2030. So we set uh, 30% in 2025. Next, for the first year of the implementation, I mean in 2018, we found that no operators had achieved the target. Four operators initially report that they achieved, but upon uh, verification process by SPAN, uh, we are confirmed that uh, target is not achieved. So the decision is no reimbursement be made uh, for 2018. Uh, in 2019, only one operator uh, report that they achieved the target. So we already verified. We, and then we now we are recommend to the ministry uh, to pay for the reimbursement uh, because of their achievement. Uh, currently, we are in the process of uh, verifying uh, their claim before uh, payment can be made. Next, please. So, uh, from our observation as a regulator, there are four main factors for not achieving the target. One, based on our uh, audit verification and uh, our observation, we found that the delay in implementing the work or program especially to tackle uh, physical loss and commercial loss. For physical loss, some sort of like pipe replacement. Uh, uh, they have, uh, I mean, for various reasons, mainly a financial constraint. So uh, in terms of uh, work permit, security deposit issue and land issue. So the budget that, uh, or the, the, the fund that we want to utilize for this uh, NRB program, is only spent uh, between 20% to 60% the most. So uh, it meant that the program was not properly carried out as per plan. Secondly, uh, still on the physical loss, the pipe leak or burst that happened in the system, uh, there are a I mean, a, a location that a very difficult location for repair. Uh, we got the report uh, from uh, one of the state that the leak occurs uh, under uh, some sort like a very uh, difficult to uh, overcome the problem uh, under the busy highway junction. So they, they, they will take very long time for repair. They have to properly uh, strategize it because uh, there are many utilities uh, involved in that uh, location. So the thirdly is more towards like uh, commercial loss. They, are, they don't have uh, insufficient workforce to carry out a meter replacement program. And finally is uh, the problem, uh, operational problem, uh, some sort of like inconsistent pressure in the system uh, causing the pipe burst and leak. Next, please. Okay, uh, with the pandemic COVID-19 hit us uh, in February 2020, 
and the government start implementing the MCO uh, from March, works cannot be carried out during that time, including NRW related work such as uh, to tackle the physical loss, uh, commercial losses, uh, like physical loss, they have to have a proper plan, active leakage control, and uh, and the rest. So this directly impact uh, the NRW performance, uh, and then uh, give and major disturbance to the uh, strategy and planning that they have planned to tackle the NRW program as per plan. So as the changing in the consumption pattern, particularly to the commercial in the, in, 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 uh, and industrial sector. So uh, the, minister, the minister also announced that, uh, the, I mean, the very, uh, give the impact to the NRB mentioned is tariff review that uh, at the moment will not be implemented as planned uh, this year. So it will hamper, uh, I mean, overall planning for the operators, uh, not only uh, the capex, uh, demand and supply planning, but including the, the, the important factors in the NRW program. Next. So, uh, as we know that the current uh, approach two will be ended this year, then uh, we hope that uh, the ministry will continue this program for the next uh, FAF nation plan. Uh, cooperators currently under approach one that uh, implemented under water supply division uh, can be participated for the approach two once the approach one uh, project is completed so if approach two program continued in the next nation plan uh, the operators have to submit a new program and target to span to correlate with the ministry new target uh, that is 30 percent in 2025 so uh, in conclusion we think that Approach two program is good, and we hope that it will continue in the twelve nation plan. With that, I end my presentation. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Engineer Sobri, for a very interesting presentation. It's very, very clear uh, that uh, the new strategy that is being introduced by the ministry, I was told, are bearing fruits. So maybe we could listen from another speaker from uh, Johor. Actually, he's the CEO of Renhill Water Services. Actually, he he served not only Johor but other states as well as a contractor. I would think, uh, and they don't call it contractor; they call it by some other names. <laughs> so, okay, Mr. Khairul Effendi, a uh, person that uh, doesn't actually need introduction. Actually, he's the CEO of Renhill Water Services. Uh, has been in the industry for more than two decades. And uh, he is now the CEO of Renhill since 19, uh, 2016. And prior to that, he has served the company as head of business development. Uh, and I think he has uh, been involved in so many projects in the country and abroad. And uh, I think he has a lot to share with us. So he will be talking about challenges in the water in the NRW uh implementation probably and also planning and i think uh, uh he is going to be given something like uh, 10 to 15 minutes i'm a bit lenient on the timing the longer you talk uh, <laughs> the less you have the interaction with the others in the in the in the what you call it in the online so i think i don't want to introduce him 
longer. He has a very long uh, CV here with me, but uh, I think we listen to him as uh, to the subject that he's going to share with us. And without further ado, please, uh, Mr. Khairul Effendi, the, 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 the floor is yours. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you Tuan Adi Asari. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And uh, very good morning everybody. I think it is a bit weird presenting in webinar like this because I don't see any reactions from the audience. But uh, I hope I can be very uh, quite effective uh, in my presentation. So I'm going to talk about NRW challenges in a, uh, in a broader view and then looking at uh, from a bird's eye point of view. Uh, focusing particularly on the challenges in uh, Malaysia. Okay, next. It's a bit of an uh, introduction. So in Malaysia now, the figure I got is uh, from, I taken from uh, Span Pack Book 2019. The one that Mr. Sobri presented just now was even more up to date until 2020. But what I got, the published figure is from 2019, published by uh, Span Book, Track Book 2019. So, as at the end of 2019, our NRW level stood at 33.2% uh, for Malaysia, and uh, the figure does not include uh, Sabah and Sarawak. Uh, and then at that percentage, some 4.9 million cubic meters per day, or 4,900 MLB of filtered water is lost. Uh, this is equivalent to supply to approximately 4 million households in Malaysia. Uh, at the consumption of about 0 0.8 cubic meter per day per household. Uh, in terms of monetary, that amounts to about 2 million ringgit per day or about 730 million ringgit per year, an astounding amount of loss. And these water losses, other than uh, those losses that we experience, uh, it also adversely affecting our water supply sustainability going forward in Malaysia. And with the ever increasing demand, Malaysia could see water supply shortages in the years to come if it is not uh, tapped. Next. So uh, I've always said that NRW reduction requires a holistic approach. And then uh, I presented this before in one of my other presentations, whereby holistic covers both the physical components and the administrative components. And then, uh, so when we want to talk about the challenges of NRW reduction program, the challenges actually come from all angles and from all aspects of these two components, physical and administrative. Next. So these are the challenges I'm going to focus on today. The first one uh, is the area of awareness. Next. And then we've got political area. And then next, uh, we have uh, the area of financial. And last but not least, the area of uh, technical. Next, we go on to the area of awareness. Okay. Uh, first of all, we need to be aware of the seriousness of the issue. If you can see the graph that I put up down there, uh, the, the bigger graph on the left, it shows the NRW reduction trend in Malaysia since the year 2002. So you can see that the green line actually represents uh, the production. So it has gone up drastically from 2002 until 2018. The NRW level percentage, the blue line has actually gone down uh, from more than 40% to now about 33%. But the NRW volume has actually been going up, albeit the reduction of uh, NRW percentage. That means the percentage that we have brought it down is not enough to actually uh, to actually cap the the increment of NRW uh, volume uh, increment. So, what's the motivation to go forward, and uh, the, or the lack of motivation? Uh, I would say uh, we need to know going forward. For example, by 2030, how much the NRW level should be for us to be sustainable and for us to ensure our water supply sustainability. So those two graphs on the right show that uh, the first one on top, that is the best scenario, I would say. If we really want to be sustainable going forward, if you're motivated enough to do this, you really want to be sustainable, we, we would like to cap the production to whatever that we have now. So if you want to cap that production level uh, up to 2030 to satisfy the increment in demand, at about two to three percent per year, 
the NRW level for the uh, for Malaysia has got to be down to about eight percent. And uh, I know that is a bit uh, far fetched. Uh, some people will say, but uh, alternatively, if you look at the second graph down below on the right, uh, at least we want to cap the volume of NRW to about 5,000 MLB as it is now. We need to bring down the NRW percentage down to 23% by 2030. And then, of course, for us to do that, we will have to have the will to commence the activity. At the moment, I think the will or the drive to actually <coughs> embark or commence the NRW program is a bit uh, lacking. That is where we have to work on a bit. Next. And then the second area is the political uh, part of NRW reduction program nationwide. First of all, we need to have a sustainable long-term policy for this. And I think that's been presented by Mr. Sobri earlier. Of course, we need to have some immediate uh, action, the medium-term action, and also a long-term policy that's got to be sustainable. Because NRW is something that we cannot uh, be complacent and we cannot uh, leave it after we reduce it to a certain level. We have to actually continue doing it. Like, like I always say, it's a bit like uh, climbing the, the escalator backward. Escalator going down, want to go up. Even if you want to stay at the same spot, we still have to keep walking. We cannot stop walking. So the policy that we have has got to be sustainable. Once we get to a certain level, for example, if you target 20% now, once we get down to 20%, there's got to be an, uh, a sufficient uh, measures and financial allocation for us to go forward and maintain it at 20%. And it's got, uh, that goes to continuous execution as well, because if you replace the pipes now, the ones that we're replacing is maybe 30, 40 year old pipe. But in 10 years, in 20 years time, there are other pipes who's going to age 30 and 40 years uh, old as well. So the program has got to be continuous and uh, until we go down to a certain economic uh, level. Even once we achieve the economic level, we still have to actually spend to uh, maintain the NRW level at a certain level. And then uh, the other one that I think a challenge that we have now is we don't have a NRW driver or champion to actually really drive the NRW reduction for the whole of Malaysia. And then uh, all the states are left to do the NRW reduction uh, in, in silo. So we don't have one uh, champion figure at the federal level to drive the NRW down effectively and uh, to get it done in time, timely. And then uh, the next one, we need to have an ultimate common uh, objective. And then, uh, in terms of political, in terms of management, uh, if you want to look at uh, what Japan did, the, what, the graph that I have on the right there was taken from uh, Hiroshima, uh, NRW reduction program. They did the program over a period of about uh, 45 years, from 1970 to uh, 2015, when they brought it down to about 5%, uh, the leakage. So it actually takes a lot of time for us to do the pipe replacement, to carry out the NRW program, for us to reach the desired level. And then uh, imagine over the period of 45 years, they must have changed ministers many times. They must have changed the uh, directors many times, the CEOs many times. But one thing common that they bring over, over those period of 45 years, is that that, that common objective. So we don't want to see, uh, for example, now uh, the, the minister now, uh, for example, they, he focused on NRW, and when we change the minister, when we change the director, they want to do something else, not NRW. So if you do that, the NRW level, the targeted NRW level cannot be achieved because it is a long-term program. We cannot achieve this in two or three years. Uh, the, this uh, graph that I taken, uh, I took, it's actually taken from one of the uh, Japan's pavilions in, in one of the uh, water events uh, recently before the MCO, uh, of course. I think Tokyo experienced the same thing as well, but I couldn't get the graph on Tokyo and NRW reduction. But uh, it is a long-term program, and that common objective has got to be uh, extended. Whoever the leaders are, whoever the, the, the ruling parties are, it's got to be extended throughout the many years. 
for us to, to see uh, an effective NRW reduction. Next. So in terms of financial, so I've divided here the three categories of uh, activities requiring investment. The one on the left is the one with the low investment. It covers things like uh, controlling the production, capacity building, and the establishment of NRW teams, doing ALC and repairs. ALC and repairs might be a bit expensive, but it should be already part of the operations of any water operators. So it doesn't require that big an investment for us to expand it. And then the improvement in billing system, setting up KPIs, GIS modeling, introducing another management system, and the replacement of customer meters. So these are the activities that require low investment. And the medium investment, we have the establishment of DMAs, uh, reservoir monitoring system, pressure management assets, replacement of big customer meters, production meters, and the introduction of technology and equipment for an effective NRW reduction. And uh, on the right, we have the high investment areas, which covers asset replacement, pipe replacement, and installation of new assets for NRW reduction. So all in all, everything requires investment. No matter, uh, it can be low, it can be high investment. Uh, therefore, uh, I think the, first of all, the water operators has got to be uh, has got to afford all this kind of investment for them to go forward. And at the moment, I believe the economic levels of leakage uh, is rather high. High meaning the another another percentage which cover the economic level is rather high. And for us to reduce that, there's got to be a revision or uh, increment in tariff to cover the water operators' expenses and OPEX. And then uh, another thing that uh, I would like to highlight is down there on the note, I said that PAB could finance an RW program because uh, my understanding at the moment, PAB only covers the capex part of uh, an RW uh, program, whereas there are other OPEX part which is not covered under uh, PAB funding that uh, maybe PAB could relook into that policy and give some, uh, some uh, what do you say, Leeway for the uh, water operators uh, to expand their OPEX on NRW. And another thing that funded by uh, PAB is the pipe rehab works itself. And uh, at the moment, when we do pipe rehabilitation works, uh, it doesn't have any reduction target. So the contractors would just do the pipe replacement and then exit without having the reduction target. Maybe in the future, it's good if you can have pipe rehab works together with the reduction target. To certain DMAs that they do to make sure that the part replacement or part rehabilitation work is actually effective in reducing an RW. Next. So next is the technical part of an RW reduction. But there's a lot of challenges here because as you can see from the diagram here, an RW covers everything from uh, production down to uh, customer metering and billing. So right up. Uh, from the water treatment plant, we have a production meter, and after that, there's a series of uh, water supply assets in terms of trunk mains, balancing reservoirs. We have booster pumps, pump house, and then uh, there's a polling main going down to the service reservoirs, and we have a lot of service reservoirs as well. And there's a lot of reticulation pipelines going down to the consumer meters. So there's a lot of ch technical challenges in dealing with another in those uh, areas, actually. Okay, first of all, we need to get the, the the measurement and the metering correct to make sure that we have the correct measurement for NRW. All the reservoirs, the storage tanks got to be monitored uh, and then to avoid uh, reservoir overflows. All the trunk mains got to be monitored as well. And DMAs got to be in place to monitor the performance of uh, every area in, in the state. And of course, in the end, the meter reading, the meter performance and the billing system has got to be done diligently to ensure that all consumption are actually metered and then uh, built to the customers to reduce NRW. So there's a lot of challenges here. You can see that uh, in the production meter itself, uh, in Malaysia, not all production uh, water treatment plants are metered. Sometimes we have faulty meters, inaccurate uh, water treatment plant meters, and leakages can happen everywhere on the distribution mains, booster pump house, valve, reservoirs, and suction tanks. 
and then uh, uh, overflowing reservoirs, pipe bursts also happen everywhere. And on the commercial part, uh, building system, quality meters, aging meters, inaccessible meters, water tap, and wrongly sized meters are all the challenges that water operators need to deal with in reducing NRW. And for, for us to do this, we really need some technical expertise and knowledge. Mm, next. So uh, in conclusion, uh, I'd just like to just mention uh, the ones that I've discussed just now. First of all, we need to have, to have the awareness and motivation, which is rather lacking in Malaysia, particularly in terms of reducing NRW. The drive to do it is just not strong enough. The political will to commence uh, is also could be better. And the financial resources also a challenge to all water operators in Malaysia, where we have to deal with uh, a lot of other OPEX and not only NRW. And the technical expertise, and even if you have the money, we receive the grant from the federal, if you don't have the technical expertise to do it, we end up putting the money into somewhere that is not effective. So we don't want that to happen. And then uh, for that, I think I conclude my presentation. The next, I do have a, another slide. Oh yeah, just a food for thought. Uh, this is a scenario. Adam goes to the bank to withdraw some money with a hole in his pocket. He withdraws some 1,000 ringgit, put his back in his pocket and walks back home. Upon reaching home, he realized that there's only 600 ringgit left. 400 ringgit has slipped through the hole in his pocket. So what should Adam do? Next, should he work harder and put more money in the bank? Or should he improve the withdrawal process so he, he can withdraw more frequently? or should he just patch the hole in his pocket? That's something for us to ponder. With that, uh, thank you very much for your attention. Assalamualaikum. Have a good day. Okay. Thank you very much. Waalaikum salam. Uh, Mr. Khairul Effendi, I hope uh, I'm back to the screen. Uh, okay, very interesting uh, presentation by Mr. Harold Fendi, the food for thought, the question I think is quite difficult. I've got two answers. He got to go to the bank and get the money to patch the pot. That's a problem. He cannot just go and patch without the money. <laughs> so you need to go to the bank either way. Uh, interesting, uh, another interesting uh, presentation. This time is going to be from our uh, colleague, in from Cambodia, I hope uh, he's ready for the presentation. Mr. Lim Min is a business development manager for the Cambodian Water Supply Association. Uh, previously, he has worked with Aid the Action as program coordinator to coordinate and also manage uh, gar sub guarantees and partners. Uh, Min worked many years in a variety of roles as well as worked closely with many non-profit agencies including the local government community development and national government at all levels and stakeholders. He holds master's uh, degree of rural development and project management from Bill Bright University. And I think uh, he has a very vast experience in this subject as you can discuss. So let mm -hmm. us listen hear from Mr. Limin uh, and I pass the stage to Mr. Limin. Okay, thank you. Uh, good morning everybody. I'm uh, Limin. I'm uh, from uh, Cambodian Water Supply Association CWA. Uh, my uh, go to the next slide. Next, next slide please. Uh, my content today, I will present in uh, four. One is about, uh, I want to introduce a little bit about uh, my uh, association as a Cambodian Water Supply Association. And this is currently, as so I, I will present about a private water operator in OU. And, uh, and the third is about a non-renewable water. And the four is about a non-renewable water challenge. Go to the next. Uh, about uh, Cambodian Water Supply Association, we uh, established in uh, 28 December 2011, and also we uh, reached 
registered with the Ministry of Interior on the 6th August uh, 2012 as an independent non-profit and non-political organization. Yeah, go to the next. Uh, for our vision, uh, we want to see uh, all Cambodian people everywhere can access to clean and safe uh, water in accordance to the Cambodian water quality standard. Next. Uh, we also have three missions. One is to support and promote a mature cooperation among our water operators in Cambodia. And the second is to enhance knowledge and technical skills based upon the leading practice in Cambodia. And the third is to uh, encourage the sustainability expansion of water supply service in Cambodia by our uh, member water operator. Yeah, next. Uh, this is what that uh, we, uh, we do right now. Our role is we try to uh, facilitate, we work with the Ministry of Industrial Science and Technology and Innovation in order to support our operator. And also, we also work with the development partner and we try to find the technology and uh, fund support through the project implementation to, in order to support our operator. Also, we work with the supply side and finance institution in order to uh, let our operator to get the supply and also get the uh, uh, financial in order to uh, increase their investment and their capacity in order to uh, reach their uh, target goal to uh, uh, let all people to access to clean and safe water and affordable water. Next. About the water supply, this is uh, for the approximately right now in Cambodia, we have about uh, 500 private water operators that among of them, 200, uh, 270 PWO is licensed by the Ministry of uh, Industrial Science and Technology and Innovation. Among of the 270, 247 PWO are our members. And in Cambodia also, we have uh, 10 public uh, utility plus uh, two uh, uh, water supply association. So it means that the 12 is uh, under the government side. And uh, for uh, the all Cambodian people right now, we have 5 million people that can access to clean water that this number is equal to 60% uh, of the total population that can access to uh, uh, clean water. And among of them, I can say that half of them uh, get uh, uh, water supply from over members. Call to the next. Uh, this is our member right now, as what I mentioned, in Civil A, we have uh, two kinds of the uh, member. One we call uh, active member, or we call, um, it means that uh, all the members come from uh, private water operators. And, uh, 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 and one other is about the company also that our member. This is the one I want to mention about the company who provide the supply to the water sector. Yeah, go to the next. Uh, about the uh, non renewable water. Non renewable water is a water that has been produced and it lost before it reached to the customer. Loss can be a real losses through leaks, sometimes also referred to the, as a physical loss or apparent losses. Go to the next. And uh, non renewable water compressed in three components. One is about a physical, second is about a commercial, and the third is unbuilt as a right consumption. About a uh, physical or uh, real losses comprise leaks from all parts of the system and overflow at the utility uh, reservoir. They are caused by the poor operational operation and maintenance or leak of active, active leak control and uh, poor control, uh, poor quality of uh, underground asset. Commercial 
or uh, apparent losses are caused by the customer error and the uh, registration delta handling error or thief of order in body form. And the last one is about the anti authorized consumption. This includes water use by the GTT for operational, uh, water use for uh, firefighting, or water provide for free to uh, a certain com, uh, consumer group. Next. Uh, for uh, the challenge of uh, non renewable water, we can say that the first one is about the lack of uh, operational uh, and maintenance skill. This including a water treatment plant facility, pipe network, or pipe installation, pipe connection, arrange schedule for uh, checking and new water is that. And the secondly is about a uh, challenge because of the lack of the data recording or never record any data related to uh, raw water meter. Uh, metering, uh, portable water metering. This is as a private water operator in Cambodia. If they uh, start up with the family business, so uh, about the recording system is still uh, limited. Some of them uh, may they uh, not record. So this is uh, what that uh, the cost to the challenge that they cannot control how much of the losses. Actually, uh, uh, for the losses in, in uh, Cambodian, uh, for the ministry, they allow for 15% uh, of loss of uh, a loss of the uh, uh, non-renewable, if you can say it is about 15% that it is uh, one, uh, uh, one of the figure that we, ask, we keep asking about. But uh, the better if the uh, non-renewable is should be less than 15% that make a good uh, business. And uh, other one is about I never install a district meter area. And also they never invest for the right to product, for example, or PVC pie replacement or technology to control uh, non renewable water. And I rarely invest on uh, human resource skill on non renewable water. And uh, one other important part that uh, this, uh, uh, we can say about the most challenge is about the pie damage. That in Cambodia right now, about a pandemic is uh, the one of the issues that is cause a uh, challenge to over operator. It can be uh, a pie damage, pineapple damage through uh, development work, like uh, for example, that when the government have uh, road construction happen in the area of uh, the pine network. So when they dig, they, they uh, develop and they dig the, the ground and then uh, it make the pie damage and also some of the people in community also when they uh, want to build a house or they make something planning as everything that when they dig and also it make the pie damage also uh, some people like we can say that gangster or something or some of that group also uh, they try to you know burn the pipe the pipe uh, uh, network as well uh, for uh, for uh, dealing with that, uh, for, over, for our association, we try to uh, provide capacity building on uh, technical, operational and management, and also business management to uh, our member. This is uh, one that it can uh, help them to uh, keep the good record, keep a uh, good operation and uh, maintenance to their uh, facility or high network. And uh, we, uh, CW also, we work with the development partner to find the project to support our member in order to increase their capacity on uh, connection and a better non water. And also, uh, for example, like uh, we work with uh, our partner from uh, AWA that uh, they bring the new technology to uh, Cambodia to pilot on uh, how to uh, manage, how to control on uh, water loss something. And also we work with the ministry uh, to solve the problem of the pie damage. This one, uh, we try to uh, find the way how can we, uh, how can we uh, uh, prevention of the pie network through uh, from the development work. Like we request them to support if they have like time of the development work, they have to inform 
to our uh, private cooperator and uh, in advance and then we try to collaborate all together to make sure that when we start to uh, build a road construction we try to uh, uh, make sure that it uh, not affect to our uh, the Pi network and also we try to work with the uh, uh, development partner to make a good relationship to build a relationship between uh, private water operator and uh, local authorities to conduct uh, uh, district or provincial or commune meeting also we invite the local authority to uh, visit to see about the water treatment plan to make sure that we kind of building relationship to them and also provide some knowledge to the local authority regarding to the water supply and uh, also try to share about the plan to each other to uh, prevention of uh, pineapple, uh, uh, pineapple uh, damage and also uh, the project try to uh, help our member to uh, build to develop the business plan for our operator in order to uh, let them for applying the loan from the mfi or banking uh, for uh, increase their capacity to uh, change their uh, old pi system or i can uh, uh, purchase the new technology to uh, uh, install for the operation. Yeah, go to the next. And uh, this is what I mentioned about it, well, you that right now we already uh, partnership together. One other. Yeah, and also we, uh, the one of the association in Cambodia that we have uh, a module with the Ministry of uh, Industrial Science and Technology and uh, uh, Innovation. Next. I think that's all from uh, my presentation today. But thank you. Okay, I hope you can listen to me. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Lim Min, for the presentation. Uh, uh, to share with uh, Mr. Lim Min, actually, I have been to Phnom Penh and I visited your, your what you call that, what works in Phnom Penh, and actually, I, I, I saw what you were doing. And I think maybe uh, Mr. Lim Min didn't mention that. Uh, Phnom Pen was having a single digit NRW, single digit, and I think something like five, six percent. I'm not sure. So maybe that one he, uh, Mr. Lim Min, could uh, answer to us later. The the the, the performance of the Phnom Pen, uh, what uh, companies in producing NRW. So I'll go back to the speakers to to attend to questions that I receive uh, through my. Uh, chat box and also my handphone so these questions are going to be addressed to i have three questions actually uh, we have five uh, three minutes three question question to sabri is uh, where to find the uh, information about uh, nrw program or nrw targets set by span that's for engineer sabri for engineer for mr Cairo, the question is uh, uh, you mentioned about no champion. Okay, what is the single key success factor of uh, NRW program so that uh, we can share? And lastly, for Mr. Limin, uh, can you tell a little bit about your NRW program in Phnom Penh, Cambodia? Okay, I start with Sobri. Can you please answer the question within this one or two minutes? <laughs> oh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Okay, for your information. Uh, the NRW target is uh, stated in each of uh, business plan uh, from the water operator. So from there only we can access and uh, uh, analyze to make a target and in line with the ministry uh, roadmap of the NRW target. So uh, for for the public, there is no access to no access. Huh? Yeah, no access. 
Okay, okay, thank you. Unfortunate that we can't accept that. Okay, we have to see you in your office probably. Okay, please, Mr. Cairo. Cairo? Yeah, uh, this one single factor important to carry out another program is actually passion. It's not actually technical, but it is the passion that we require. And then, uh, because there's a lot of challenges in doing another, but there's no exact science to it. You just have to start doing it. And uh, once we encounter any problems, we get to overcome those problems. The idea is, if you want to climb a very tall staircase, don't look up uh, on the top because it will scare you. There's a lot of steps for you to do. So the, the, the idea is to take one step at a time and then encounter all problems uh, bit by bit until you get where you want to be. So passion is the answer. Okay, thank you. Mr. Limin, can you tell me a little bit more about NRW in Cambodia in terms of projects, however? I can't hear you. Uh, oh. Memory viewers in Cambodia, I think right now it's very difficult to uh, to mention or to uh, control. As you know, as what that I mentioned to you that uh, for our member, uh, private board operator is uh, formed from the uh, family business. Therefore, the most challenge is about they didn't record it. So they didn't record about the Delta from uh, uh, their water production. This is the one that we uh, uh, the, the over challenge to uh, monitor. And the second is about the uh, uh, pipe damage that is uh, come up with the uh, road construction. So I think two of these that is this the most challenge that are very difficult to uh, uh, monitor or to. Uh, uh, deal with that uh, uh, this project and uh, for that uh, CWA uh, have to uh, have over members so far we provide capacity building to them through uh, funded from uh, the development partner on uh, O&M in order to uh, let them to uh, try to uh, make a good uh, performance on their for uh, treatment plan as well as to uh, on the pie uh, layout and they, they recommend them or they uh, advise them to uh, put like more of the um, main meter in order to uh, control about the losses but you know uh, this is just only we, we just only advise them but yeah the problem is that some they don't uh, follow us okay. yeah and uh, okay, thank uh, you. one other Can I add a little bit? I want another one. We uh, start yeah, yeah, to have them. Can, yeah, I, yeah, I can have another minute. So, okay. Uh, for uh, uh, helping them in uh, development business plan, that this is one other uh, channel that uh, we try to uh, advocate and helping our operators through. You know, when we conduct a business plan, we need to uh, analyze about the data from uh, uh, finance and uh, technical side. In the technical side, what that we uh, uh, can uh, encourage them to record the data because you know without the data from the technical side we cannot produce the business plan and also CWA we have uh, one other core activity we uh, conduct a visit to our member that it is one that we try to uh, do the uh, assessment to our operator that uh, we can see what is about the strength and, and the fitness that is also linked to the non review as well yeah, that's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very interesting and very yeah. lengthy explanation of uh, the work done by the Cambodian Water Association as far as they try to hand it, give a helping hand to uh, their members. Okay, I think uh, that wraps up our session because we have, I think, only up to 11 o'clock and now we have overshoot by another uh, by about four minutes. So I would like to take this opportunity to thank every speakers and those viewers uh, for their time with us. I think we have about nearly 80 viewers with us uh, throughout our uh, session. And uh, I think it has been a very interesting discussion from all of you. 
and I'm very yeah. sorry that we can uh, continue with the Q&A. I think probably if you have questions, you can uh, you can give it to the chat box, and I think that will be answered uh, separately or in another by by mail or whatever by the speakers or by the organizer. I think for that, uh, let's just thank the speakers uh, very much in a normal way, <laughs> and I hope to see you all again. Thank you very much, the organizer, for giving us the time to have this session online. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Peace. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, fantastic. Before we, before we end the session today, we would like to say thank you for joining the Non-Revenue Water Challenges Virtual Conference. Please do visit the 109 outstanding exhibitors on our virtual platform and please have a look at the other sessions such as the Pocket Talks, Indonesia, Vietnam and the Technical Seminars. We look forward to seeing you back again today at the Asia Water Virtual Platform. Have a great day ahead. Okay.